Hello everyone, this is Wes Henson, pastor of the Ridge Church, and the Ridge Church campus is located at 7350 Old Highway 13 in Carbondale, Illinois, and I want to thank you for joining me today for this week's small group Bible study for the week of December the 3rd, 2023 at the Ridge Church, and today we begin a brand new unit of study just in time for the Advent season, and it's titled, A Name Like No Other. Now, most often, even today, there is a history and meaning behind the names that we name our children. And I'm quite sure there is some history and some meaning behind your name. My name is Wes. Uh, it's short for Wesley, Wesley Charles. And I'm named after my dad. So I'm a junior. But my dad's first name, Wesley, is named after his dad, who was Wesley, and also his mom's dad, his grandfather on his mother's side whose name was Charles. So I'm just Wesley Charles Jr., not Wesley the uh, third. So there's a little bit of meaning there. In fact, when I tell people my first and middle name, they always associate it with um, Methodism. They say, well, you must be named after Charles Wesley in the, uh, in, in the 1700s. I said, no, no, not at all. I have a history. There's a meaning behind my name. Uh, anyway, names are important, but no name carries greater value and importance than the name of God. God's name reflects his, his attributes and character, and it draws us, his name draws us to trust him. So in our study today, which is titled, The Importance of God's Name, we're going to focus on Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 6 and 9 through 15. When God called Moses to lead his people out of Egypt, Moses needed to know the one who was sending him. And God revealed an important aspect of his nature through his name, I am who I am. And the point of our lesson this week is that God's name reveals that he is the all-powerful God whom we can trust completely. Okay, if you check out the links, you're going to discover a printed summary along with other resources for this week's study. And then I invite you to join us on the Ridge Church campus this Sunday morning at 9 a.m. as we go into greater detail. All right, let's begin this week's on-the-go Bible study. If you have your Bibles, turn to Exodus chapter 3, and we'll be looking at verses 1 through 6. And again, I'm reading from the Christian Standard Bible. Meanwhile, Moses was shepherding the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And then the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire within a bush. And as Moses looked, he saw that the bush was on fire, but it was not consumed. So Moses thought, I must go over and look at this remarkable sight. Why isn't the bush burning up? Well, when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses, here I am, Moses answered. Do not come closer, the Lord said. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. And then he continued, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Now I want you to notice, first of all, from these few verses that we see here that God is a holy God, and we are to approach the holy God with reverential fear. Now Moses, as you may remember, had killed an uh Egyptian, and he fled the palace of his adopted mother, uh, Pharaoh's daughter, and he found shelter among the tents of Jethro, who was a Midianite priest, and he ended up marrying Jethro's daughter. Uh, you'll notice from the text here that his father-in-law is described as a priest of Midian. Now, Midian was a son of Abraham by his concubine, Keturah. We read about that in Genesis chapter 25. And Abraham had sent him and his family away to the east, where they became a nomadic tribe and eventually settled in the uh, habitable areas of the Sinai Peninsula. So the God that the priest of Midian served, Jethro, is really uncertain, although in later time, Jethro did declare that Yahweh was, or was, or is, uh, the greater 
than all of the other gods. And we read about that in Exodus 18. So I want you to notice here as well, when we look at this passage here, that, you know, an application, I guess, is that, you know, too often we ourselves, we rush into the presence of God. And doing so, we just carry, if you will, the dust of the world and its cares. And so we have to, we have to pause uh, to recognize God's holiness. And the way that we do that is by setting aside those things that, in, that hinder our encounter with the Lord. And then also notice here that when Moses realized that he was in God's holy presence, what did he do? Well, he hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. When we experience God up front and personal, it forces us to see our sinfulness and we become like the prophet Isaiah and cry out in Isaiah 6, Woe is me, O Lord, I am undone. But fortunately for Moses and also for us, God takes us beyond the terrible acknowledgement of our sin and brings us into this joyous experience of salvation and service. So God is a holy God that we are to approach with reverential fear. And then in these next verses, we're going to see that we can trust God to do what God says that God's going to do. All right, look at verses 9 through 12. So because the Israelites cry for, cry for help has come to me, and I have also seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. Therefore, Moses, go. I am sending you to Pharaoh so that you may lead my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses asked God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, that I should bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God answered, I will certainly be with you, and this will be the sign to you that I am the one who sent you. When you bring the people out of Egypt, you will all worship God at this mountain. Now, as we unpack those verses for just a moment, you know, whenever we think that God doesn't know our situation, we need to remember God's response to Moses. You see, the desperate cries of the people had indeed reached the ears of the Lord. And God heard and God knew what was happening with his people, especially in their distress. And God also wasn't blind to the oppression of the Egyptians, that what they had done to the Hebrews. Uh, the Lord wasn't insensitive to their plight. So know this, that God does hear our cry. In fact, the people weren't even crying out to the Lord. They were just crying out, but the Lord heard them and responded. So next here we see that we can identify with Moses' dilemma, right? Uh, the Lord said to Moses, I've heard their cry, I've seen their situation, now I'm going to send you. And Moses said, wait a minute. You know, when God presents us with a difficult task, as he did Moses, you know, we too would quickly ask, well, why me? Uh, surely there are others who are better educated, they're more qualified, they're stronger, uh, they're more influential. In fact, they may even want to do it. God's answer to us is the same as it was to Moses. Uh, you know, Moses, it's not about you. It's all about me. It's all about God. And Moses was right. I mean, he was inadequate for the task. But you see, God was fully capable to accomplish his purposes. And this all-powerful God would be with Moses as he obeyed the Lord. Well, in these next verses, we're going to see that God's name reflects his, his sovereign character that draws us into a trusting relationship with him. Let's move on down to verse 13. Verse 13 says, When Moses asked God, If I go to the Israelites, and I say to them, Oh, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What should I tell them? And so God replied to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say this to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. And this is my name forever. And this is how I am to be remembered in every generation. So I am, this is the shortened form of the Hebrew word translated, I am who I am. 
So God's response to Moses is asking what God's name is. He responds not with a name that defines him or limits him, that limits God. Rather, the name that God uses is an affirmation that God is always the subject, I am, always free to be and to act as God's will. I am who I am, and uh, in my, you know, just in my mind in trying to understand this, I say I am who I am and I can do what I want, the sovereign God. Now, interestingly here, Moses didn't ask God in whose name he should approach Pharaoh because everyone in Pharaoh's court knew who Moses was. But the Israelites, it was a different story. If Moses went to them under the authority of the God of your ancestors, he would need to answer their questions about who God is. And the first question that they would ask is, what is this God's name? Because the Egyptians had lots of names for lots of gods. His name, God's name, was a name that would lead them to trust in God. I am who I am. Okay, so how do we apply this week's study to our life this week? Let me give you three applications after three suggestions, if you will, to how we can put this lesson into our practice, life's practice this week. Number one is listen. Uh, listen to God's voice. Put yourself in a place where you are most likely to be able to hear him speak. Moses was on the backside of the desert, just him and the sheep. And prayerfully seek God's guidance about how you can glorify him. Second application is examine the I am's of the scripture. Look up the list of Jesus' I am statements. We find them in the book of John. And, and write down at least one thing each statement reveals about God's character. And then the third application is this. Answer God's call. You know, is God calling you to do something that seems to be beyond your ability, beyond your skills or your position? Well, take a step of faith and trust the Lord for the next step. Okay, let's wrap everything up. Names tell a story, and they really do matter. No name matters more than the name of God. And God's name reflects his character and draws us to trust in him. Thank you for tuning in this week. And if you check out the links, you'll discover a printed summary along with other resources of this week's study. And then I invite you to join us on campus Sunday morning at 9 a.m. as we go into greater detail. Bye for now.